Hey everyone, welcome to a new RST2 challenge. Now you may not know this, but there's actually a small speedrunning community for uh, playing the Rolikos Dekun 1 scenarios in open RST2 as quickly as possible. And I once did a video on this where I did it in one and a half hours. It actually got quite a lot of views. And in, in the meantime, the speedrunners have actually gotten the record down to 18 uh, minutes, I believe, which is uh, insanely fast. But yeah, in uh, this video I'm not going to uh, attempt a, a record uh, run or anything. Uh, what I want to do is uh, actually play through all the Rollercoast Tycoon 1 scenarios. And to make them a little bit more interesting, uh, I've actually doubled all the required goals in the scenarios. For example, Paradise Pier now requires 1200 guests at the end of year 2. Uh, we have uh, Forest Frontiers over here which requires uh, 500 guests at the end of year 1. Um, yeah, a lot of these scenarios are still quite easy, uh, but some of them will probably require a bit more work. Evergreen Gardens, 2000 guests. So yeah, I have no idea how uh, difficult this is going to be. Uh, I assume it's gonna be uh, gonna be all right. Uh, so yeah, I will just play through all these uh, scenarios. I will fast forward through the boring parts. I will not actually keep uh, keep a timer. Uh, but yeah, I can uh, give a rough uh, estimate of uh, how long it uh, it uh, took me at the end of the video. All right. With that said, um, I will uh, start with Forest Frontiers. Now, Forest Frontiers, a very easy scenario. Uh, we do require a lot of guests now. Uh, what I'm going to do is simply uh, put down some of these uh, pre-designed rides, and that should. Uh oh, the game's paused. <laughs> I'm just gonna put down some of these pre-designed rides and that should uh, allow us to simply fast forward and beat the scenario if we do some advertisements. Now, for most of these parks I'm just going to set the ride price to free and I'm going to set the uh, admission price a bit higher and that will allow me to get a lot of money. Also immediately max out the loans and of course uh, spam advertisements as they are really broken in this game. Now one thing that will probably become an issue in this uh, playthrough is overcrowding. When the parks get too crowded uh, the guests really don't like that. And that's definitely something uh, to, uh, yeah, to try and prevent in your park. So one thing around that is by uh, one way around that is by making uh, long queues. For some reason, it doesn't recognize this uh, as a queue. Let me fix that. So yeah, one way around this issue is by simply making long queues and making lots of uh, extra paths in the park. And yeah, you can often see uh, speedrunners make uh, a lot of uh, long paths like this. Simply loop around uh, a few times, and that will really help uh, distribute the guests uh, throughout the park. Oh, something else, uh, it's in the something else which I'm going to use is in the options here. Let me actually quickly uh, turn off the cheat menu so I don't accidentally use it. Something else which I'm going to be using is early uh, completion. Not sure where. Oh yeah, enable early scenario completion. So that means that as soon as the scenario goal has been reached, the scenario will be completed. And that will basically make it so that uh, I don't have to wait uh, fully for the end uh, of year, the end of the year to be reached for me to actually complete the scenario. That will just make it a little bit more convenient for me. Now you can quickly see here how overpowered uh, advertisements are in this game. <laughs> Just get a ridiculous amount of guests here. They all pay a lot of money to enter the park and we've beaten Forest Frontiers. So let's uh, continue on in Dynamite Dunes. Alright, in Dynamite Dunes uh, typically what speedrunners do is uh, make a small cursor design and spam that uh, just to get the uh, amount of required guests as quickly as uh, possible and also hope that uh, this ride doesn't uh, actually crash. So if the brakes uh, fail on this ride it will actually crash. It might also crash if the uh, yeah, if a train stops on the lift hill 
and another train uh, crashes uh, into it. So that's also something uh, that you should probably uh, prevent. I'm simply going to run it with one train and uh, that should uh, eliminate all issues. I could also put uh, block brakes on it, but I'm not going to bother with that. Now, typically uh, people here wait until the junior coaster is uh, researched. Uh, there we go. That uh, should be the only ride you need to finish this park. So I'm going to make a very small track design, which I saw others uh, build. Okay, let's see if this works. So this one uses the reverse incline launched uh, shuttle mode. I will also give it uh, purple colors because uh, I will probably build a lot of these rides also in, in the upcoming parks. And that will help uh, the park get the award for most dazzling color scheme. And awards are definitely a good thing to go for in the uh, in scenario play since they um, temporarily increase the number of guests visiting your park. Right, the stats of this ride are uh, trash, but uh, for every ride that you place, uh, more guests will uh, go to your park. So the stats of a ride don't actually matter uh, that much. Now, um, I don't think that many people will actually go on this ride, so overcrowding might become an uh, issue. Now we're now at half of the required uh, guest. Uh, you can see uh, already quite a bit of crowding happening here. Uh, normally uh, I believe the scenario would have been uh, beaten now. Um, oh no, we uh, would have needed 150 guests more. But yeah, definitely some extra paths will be needed here. And maybe I'll uh, try to extend these queues a bit. And that should also uh, yeah, help get rid of some of the overcrowding. Alright, I uh, probably have enough uh, money now, so I can probably also drop down the park entrance uh, price. Not that it would do much, but uh, yeah, if I do that, it means I no longer have to drop down the entrance price of these uh, coasters. Because right now the park entrance fee is pretty high, so guests can also have to pay for the coasters. They will be complaining that they don't want to pay as much. Now the stats of these coasters are also trash, so that probably also uh, doesn't really help. Anyway, um, let's continue these advertisement campaigns. Now, the advertisement campaign for uh, free rides on a particular ride, it's actually more uh, effective if that ride actually costs uh, money. So if it's actually a free ride and then you have advertisement for free rides on a ride that's already free, then it, uh, the marketing campaign will not spawn as many guests as it uh, would normally do. Now, I, I forgot actually what number it is that you need, uh, the minimum price for this advertisement campaign. So right now I'm just setting it at, uh, at one euro. Uh, you probably recognize this uh, corkscrew coaster design uh, from uh, Marcel Voss. Uh, it's basically one of the best rides you can have uh, for a speed run. Actually, that's quite decent stats. It's incredibly short and it can handle a lot of guests. All right, that's another scenario beaten. Now let's move on to uh, Leafy Lake. Yeah, not really much to say about this scenario. It's quite easy. We only need a thousand guests. Uh, again, I will just set the entrance price uh, quite high in the beginning. Spam advertisements, gaining a lot of money. And uh, with that money from the first rush of uh, guests, uh, we should be able to easily uh, beat the scenario. Also, uh, <laughs> I probably don't even need that money, because the, uh, the loan you can have in this park is just uh, incredibly high. Okay, here's the other design. So uh, basically you just have 
two station pieces and a vertical loop and then you launch it uh, at a bit of higher speed than the minimum so it's at uh, 64 kilometers uh, per hour so there's no chance for it to actually uh, pass over uh, through the loop now i also gave it a funky color so i gave it uh, the pink color so there's actually four colors which work for the most dazzling ride color scheme uh, award so it's bright pink light orange bright green and bright purple so that's the main track colors you want to use i believe only this uh, this what's it called the main color only has to be a uh, pink or uh, one of these four colors i mean but i also always like to use to g give this one the same color just because it looks uh, nicer all right so i'm going to save this uh, ride design and then i will uh, spam it a few times uh, throughout the park All right, uh, the park was already getting quite a bit overcrowded, so that's why I made these uh, extra parts in the end. But yeah, quite an uh, easy scenario, even with the doubled uh, guest call. All right, don't really remember which one uh, is normally the next one. Uh, Diamond Heights. Uh, that's also quite easy. Uh, yeah. Diamond Heights is a scenario where... Oh, it doesn't actually show that I beat the scenarios. Okay. Um, Diamond Heights scenario where you have to um, get a certain park value. And that's actually quite easy if you uh, know how to uh, do that. So basically every ride that you build adds a certain park value uh, to the park. So if we just spam a few rides and just uh, open them, then at once uh, the park should get a lot of uh, a lot of park value increase. And that should easily enable us to beat the scenario. So I'm just going to spam uh, quite a few of these. No, we don't have that l much money, so I'll uh, maximize the loan. And uh, this should definitely be enough to uh, get us the required uh, park value. Okay, the park value that we need is 400,000. So let's uh, quickly see how, how high this will uh, take us. So the park value is now 119,000. So uh, as soon as these rides uh, um, start leaving their station and calculate stats, then we should see the park value go up. Well, I think I made a mistake here in <laughs> yeah, setting the tool. Wait for full load. That was uh, not very clever. All right, so we already have park value of 327,000. Let's fast forward a bit, see if it increases even more. No, this uh, seems to be approximately... Oh, no, never mind. I said nothing. <laughs> We've beaten the scenario. All right, let's uh, move on to the next one. All right, here's Evergreen Gardens. Now, the nice thing about this scenario is that it already has a ton of paths. So uh, we don't have to worry that much about overcrowding if we just disperse our rides throughout the park. Now, the annoying thing about this version of the game which I'm playing on now is that the safe track designs uh, their paths they stay exactly in the same, uh, yeah, with the same connected edges as they were saved in. So, for example, what I'm, what I mean with this is, is uh, if I place this uh, looping coaster down here, um, this path stays the same and doesn't automatically connect to this path, which is uh, quite annoying because now I have to do that uh, manually. So yeah, I'm not sure if it's a bug or if it's an intended feature, but. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll talk uh, about it with the developers of the game. Thankfully this is not a real, uh, this is just a casual uh, sort of speed run, so I don't really uh, care too much. Alright, looks like the number of guests is actually stabilizing, so uh, I'll uh, add a few more rides, probably uh, overcrowding or some other issues in the park. A lot of people are actually uh, hungry, so I'll, I'll play some uh, food stalls. 
Uh, maybe they'll get the guests to stay a bit longer. All right, that's Evergreen Gardens uh, beaten. Took me a bit longer than it uh, usually does. But yeah, I had to uh, take care of some of the guest uh, needs in the form of uh, food and uh, and toilets. All right, next one's Bumbly Beats. Now this is this one's going to be a little bit tougher. Uh, I will need to start advertisements immediately because we need 1,500 guests in this park, which is uh, a lot. Now I will add some uh, block breaks to uh, this coaster, because uh, else it's uh, almost guaranteed to uh, to crash at some point. Alright, um, the course coaster is actually uh, researched quite late into this scenario. So that's why uh, you have to start immediately uh, spamming junior coasters in order to actually uh, beat it quickly. Alright, it's going pretty well so far. I've now lowered the entrance price to zero. And yeah, we have enough money uh, coming in for sure. So now it's just uh, waiting for 200 extra guests to come in. Now I made all these extra paths again just to prevent overcrowding in the park. It's getting quite crowded. I also extended all these queues in the park just to get as many uh, guests off the paths as possible. Alright, I will now just uh, fast forward to see if there's anything else I have to do to, uh, to actually be able to beat this scenario. Maybe I'll build an extra ride or two over here, just to uh, lure more guests to this area. Alright, that's Bumbly Beach beaten. Now let's move on to the next scenario, which is Trinity Island. Alright, not really much to say about this scenario other than just uh, spam these coasters and try to keep the guests uh, happy. Uh, I think I had just the right amount of paths in the park uh, to prevent overcrowding to become much of an issue. But yeah, the advertisement campaigns were definitely uh, necessary in this uh, scenario. Alright, here's Katie's Dreamland again with the park value that's required uh, multiplied by 2. Now you don't start off with a lot of money in this scenario, but uh, you can get quite a big loan. So first I'm just going to jack up the park entrance uh, fee for a bit. Just get a lot of guests uh, to enter the park using advertisement campaigns. And then I'm just going to add several rides, just like I did in Diamond Heights, to uh, get the required uh, park value. Alright, got an insane amount of money from those <laughs> advertisement campaigns. So uh, now uh, we should have enough money to uh, spam all the rides that we need. And uh, also the look looping roller coaster was uh, researched, so that will also uh, really help. Now I still have this design where um, <laughs> it waits for the full load. So I will just uh, um, yeah disable that and then uh, I will resave the design. Okay, for some reason it doesn't uh, show any of the cube parts here. That's uh, really annoying because I really want to save it uh, with the with the cube path. So let's uh, see if this helps. Ah, yeah, now for some reason it is possible. I have no clue why that is. Uh, so it's another bug to uh, report to the developers of the game. Uh, 
All right, that's Katie's Dreamland beaten. Now these scenarios uh, where you have to get a park fill are all uh, actually quite uh, easy if you know what you're doing. All right, here's Pokey Park. Another one of these uh, parks where you have to get a certain park value. Now, uh, I re actually know that this uh, challenge is possible. Uh, we only need 200,000 park value. And I've actually uh, made a video once where I beat the park with uh, over 1 million park value. And even without buying any of the extra land. So yeah, just going to delete all these rides and then uh, spam some rides on my own. Alright, since this is a scenario where you have to reach a certain park value, guests don't actually have to be able to uh, ride the coasters. So uh, I will just uh, open all of them at the same time, and I'm pretty sure this should be enough uh, park value to beat the scenario. Alright, there we go. <laughs> Sorry, um, if you ever wonder how to beat this scenario without buying any land, just spam a lot of coasters. Even this short layout will do, and uh, that will get you the required park value very quickly. Alright, now we go to White Water Park. Now, usually in this scenario you only need 900 guests. So, uh, typically you don't actually have to build any rides. You can just uh, spam uh, advertisements uh, twice. So, I uh, run all of them for 12 months twice, I believe, and that will beat uh, the scenario for you. That should get you enough guests. But uh, now, of course, the guest goal has been doubled. So I will actually have to b have to build uh, several rides. So I will just uh, research uh, roller coasters and uh, yeah, just wait until we get uh, some good ones, and then I'll spam them uh, throughout the park. Alright, um, overcrowding is getting uh, quite a big issue, uh, also some guests needing to go to the toilet, so uh, I'll try to add some extra parts here. Uh, yeah, most of this parts most of this park is actually a big single path, which uh, means the guests will all be forced to walk over the, the same one. So, probably if I connect these paths here, the park will be a circle again, and that should improve the situation a bit. Also going to add some paths uh, crossing over the water, water here. Now I did uh, actually have uh, a little drowning incident here. Um, but yeah, I hope it doesn't in, uh, doesn't uh, affect the park value or the park rating too much. All right, I'm getting to the required amount of guests, but um, yeah, the park rating is only just above what we need. I'll see quite a lot of vandalism. Um, that's also not really good for uh, the guest happiness. So I will just uh, try and uh, remove that wherever I can find it. Um, I think if I fast forward now, we won't get the required amount of guests. So I'm just going to make some extra paths just uh, for that uh, bit of uh, overcrowding management. Now, if you press the I button in this game, you can actually see uh, the issues uh, in, your, in your park. Uh, you can see all the vandalism here, but also uh, that's caused by a lot of litter. So uh, I'm, I'll just increase the amount of handyman in the park to an insane amount and that should uh, help against these uh, issues. Alright, and with that final push uh, we have beaten the scenario. So now it's time to move to the next one. Now I'll have to look uh, <laughs> over here again what's the next one. Because uh, in the folder where I put all these new scenarios, it doesn't show, uh, yeah, uh, they are not in the correct order, let's put it like that. Alright, the next one's Millennium Mines.
Okay, the next scenario is carts and coasters. Now these uh, coasters, I think they're uh, pretty poorly uh, designed. Especially the cart tracks, they look kind of strange. I do like it um, uh, moving over the entrance though. But yeah, well, the first thing I usually do is uh, get rid of them. Uh, they, they just take up a, a lot of space. And we can use that space way more efficiently. Well, I'm not saying the <laughs> coasters that I design in this playthrough look very nice, but uh, oh well. Um, yeah, let's see what we have here. The junior coaster is already available, so that's probably what I'm going to use uh, first. Oh, that's strange. <laughs> I keep finding uh, weird bugs uh, throughout this playthrough. I tried to place a toilet uh, now. And instead it redirects me to a piece of track, which uh, apparently is uh, is here. Maybe it didn't uh, properly delete the coaster that used to be here. But yeah, it's uh, definitely a strange uh, bug going on here. Alright, I think uh, the number of guests should reach the required amount now. There we go. Uh, this was quite a tough scenario. Um, with 2,000 guests is a lot. So there's quite a lot of things you have to take into account in the park. And finally, um, yeah, <laughs> I actually noticed that I didn't have enough mechanics. So the ones that I had uh, were all busy. And yeah, having a lot of downtime in your park is not very good for your uh, park rating. Okay, let's uh, see what the next scenario is. Alright, next scenario is Mel's World. Now, <laughs> I need 2400 guests in this scenario, which is uh, a lot. Now, we do have a lot of land available here, but uh, yeah, it's gonna be uh, quite uh, tough. It's gonna be very crowded in this park. Alright, this park was uh, less problematic than I expected. What helps is that uh, the area you have in the park is really big. So it was uh, very easy to actually uh, squeeze in some extra paths and to, uh, yeah, to prevent uh, overcrowding from, uh, from happening. Okay, here we have uh, Mystic Mountain. Uh, this one uh, actually has a very small area, so I'll uh, really have to cram in a lot of rides to get the 1600 guests which is uh, quite a quite a big amount oh oops <laughs> i uh, thought i was using the scenery removal to tool but i was actually uh, lowering the land immediately uh, uh, ridding me of all my money so i'll have to uh, retry this one Alright, this was quite a tough scenario, mostly because it rained a lot in the park. And when it rains, guests don't really go on these coasters and it leads to massive overcrowding. So it's just a matter of uh, building enough rides, uh, building more and more paths. And in the end, I also added some extra queues just to keep as many guests off the paths as possible. Alright, next scenario is Pacific uh, Pyramids. Now, did you know this is actually the same map as uh, Dynamite Dunes? But uh, I believe it's rotated and the entrance also in a different spot. Maybe I, 
able to, uh, to see it. Uh, for example, in Dynamite Dunes, I believe the entrance is over here. And then here would be the entrance of the park. And here's the little hill and Dynamite Plaster would be over here. So yeah, you should uh, definitely go uh, check that out. Alright, uh, let's uh, earn some money. <laughs> Alright, time to uh, add some nice uh, coasters to the park. Now guests won't actually ride these coasters in the beginning uh, if if I don't change the, the ride price. But uh, I don't uh, particularly feel like doing that because it uh, will take me a few seconds for every coaster. So I will just keep building it and the guests will keep uh, coming into the park. And they actually have to pay quite a high en park entrance fee to enter the park. So mostly this uh, this stage uh, of, the, of the scenario is just about earning a lot of money. Uh, so I will just uh, keep doing this for a while until I have a lot of money and if I think I have enough to beat the scenario and then I will lower the price and guess will uh, will be uh, willing to uh, pay for these coasters again. Alright, that uh, seems to have done the trick. Uh, gotten quite a few guests uh, out of the, away from the pods and into the queues. Because uh, yeah, overcrowding is uh, really something that will uh, make guests unhappy uh, really quickly. So that's uh, definitely something to uh, avoid. So yeah, definitely an improvement uh, <laughs> over the uh, how the park initially looked. Alright, another scenario here. Uh, with a very high guest goal in 2400. Now, um, yeah, these rides, uh, they're nice, but they take away, take up way too much uh, space. So I'm going to uh, demolish these original rides and replace them with rides of my own. You get quite a lot of money for uh, demolishing these uh, as well. Now we can probably uh, keep this one. Uh, Okay, this one can also go, and we'll, we'll replace them with uh, uh, corkscrew coasters. Well, these are really small ones. Now, Haunted Highs are great rides, but uh, this one was a bit too much in the way. And this is probably a great spot to, to actually put some of these uh, corkscrew coasters. So uh, this one had to go. No, this is strange. <laughs> I cannot actually build a path here because it says there's an object in the way. Again, this is probably uh, again the same as the previous uh, bug that they encountered in carts and coasters. Now, if I want to place it, all, it'll probably say there's an yeah. So it looks like it didn't actually uh, properly remove the ride. Alright, this is another uh, quite short scenario. I only have two years to beat this. Um, and we need 1200 guests. Now, that shouldn't be uh, too difficult, although our, the space that we have is very limited. Now, what I'm probably going to do is uh, actually remove these pods and replace them with pods that sit directly on the water. And that, that should make it uh, easy for us to actually place down uh, all these uh, rides. Hmm, so strange. There were a few guests in the park, but looks like they have just uh, disappeared. Alright, this was uh, actually quite easy. 
So let's move on to the next one, which is... Let's check. All right, we go to the expert part, Lightning Peaks. So let's see how much our uh, goal is actually. 1800 guests. Now the problem in this park is actually that the space that you have is very limited and the landscaping is the landscape is very challenging. So this uh, this will be uh, quite tough. Alright, the good thing about charging ridiculous amounts of money uh, to your guests to enter the park is that uh, you get ridiculous amounts of money to do nice stuff with, uh, like uh, flattening uh, some of the mountains here. Okay, I can uh, now simply place uh, several more of these uh, coasters here, and I think with that we should have uh, enough money to uh, beat the scenario. Now, this is one of the parks where uh, overcrowding uh, really becomes an issue pretty quickly. So uh, I'm just going to stack some pods on top of each other, just so guests have uh, more space uh, to walk. It might look uh, very silly, uh <laughs> but uh, it, uh, it should do the trick. All right, this uh, <laughs> three double or this triple uh, path contraption uh, really uh, helped the overcrowding issue. And uh, yeah, that's uh, definitely uh, one way to uh, tackle this park if uh, you have to get a ridiculous amount of guests. Okay, um, we're almost done. So let's move on to the next one, which is Ivory Tower. So that's a fun one. At least that's what I would say if I had actually uh, turned that scenario into uh, one where the where you have to get double the goal. All right, uh, I'm gonna quickly uh, turn it into a scenario. All right, <laughs> that uh, took a while, but here's our ivory towers uh, scenario. Now, um. It will take quite a lot of time to fix all the stuff that's here on the paths or to delete all of it. Uh, so what I'm going to do is uh, I will just remove all the rides, remove all the paths and then just uh, redo the entire park. Alright, some of the guests uh, strangely uh, disappeared while I removed all the paths, but uh, most of them uh, still uh, are walking around here and should find their way uh, back soon enough. Okay, uh, now it's time for me to add some rides to the park, and it's probably the easiest to do this uh, in the sections that are above water, because they're actually uh, nice and flat. Okay, now we get to what's probably the most difficult uh, scenario of the bunch, Rainbow Valley. The scenario where you cannot uh, do any landscaping or remove any trees. <laughs> Alright, uh, first off I'm just going to uh, try and gain a lot of money and then we're gonna build along the river and uh, try to fit in as many rides as we can here.
Uh, again, in this park, uh, overcrowding is a big issue. So I made this a hideous path above the other one. And a lot of guests are using it, so uh, that's, uh, that's probably a good sign. I'm probably go gonna make another one of uh, those on uh, this side of the park, just to disperse all the guests uh, throughout the park as much as possible. And doing that should allow me to get to the required 2000 guests. Alright, was a tough scenario, but I did it. So now it's uh, time for the final one, which is Thunder Rock. Now an easy way to uh, prevent overcrowding in this scenario is uh, yeah, simply by making some uh, loops of path uh, underground. As long as you uh, make sure the paths are not a dead end but uh, a loop, then guests should uh, use the, these paths to get to their uh, destination. Alright, and with that we have beaten all the Rollercoast Tycoon 1 scenarios with uh, their goals doubled. <laughs> now, I think this was, uh, for me this was quite a fun playthrough. It wasn't actually too difficult. Uh, but yeah, for sure uh, it was a good way to make these uh, uh, scenarios a little bit more uh, challenging. Now, um, I can already uh, uh, predict some of the comments which I will be getting. Uh, that uh, I often get the question from people who want to see me uh, play these uh, scenarios and make them beautiful. Uh, that's just, that's not what this video is about. This was uh, sort of a speedrun sort of a challenge for myself. I do sometimes uh, uh, play a scenario in a in a beautiful way, but yeah, that'll be uh, something for a for a different video. All right, um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed uh, watching me uh, play through all these uh, scenarios. Uh, yeah, I quite enjoyed it. Um, so yeah, uh, already uh, thanks for all the support I'm getting on all my videos in the in the comments. It really means a lot to me, and of course my uh, my wonderful patrons. All right, hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you again in the next one. See you later. Mm -hmm.